I just want to take a few moments and uh, just step into the river. do this simple song and here I am to worship and here I am to bow down and here I am to say you're my God you're all together lovely you're all together worthy you're all together wonderful to me. Yes, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say, you're my God. All together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. I'll never know, I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it comes to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all to together lovely all together word all together wonder Jesus we worship your name we honor your presence we thank you father that you are in the place that we are in we thank you father for the gifts and things that you are releasing into us in this moment. We honor you, Father. We bless the name that is above every name, whatever name that is trying to exalt itself above your name. We renounce it and let it be brought down in Jesus' name. Let the only name of Jesus be the highest name. So we magnify your name, Jesus. Jesus, come on, just say his name, Jesus, 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 come on, we're just increasing his name, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, oh Jesus, you are Jesus, your name is above every name, Jesus, we worship your name, for there is power in your name, Jesus, we love your name, we love your name, no other name, no other name. Jesus, Jesus, Savior, say, say, you are Savior, Savior, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, you are my Savior. Savior, Savior, Jesus.
love worshiping and watching the kids flip all around and do what they do. I hear uh, that it's somebody's birthday, it's somebody's birthday, it's somebody's birthday. It's Martha's birthday. <laughs> so, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Martha. Happy birthday to you. How old? prosper may you live long and prosper may you live long and prosper may you live long and prosper thank you that comes from somewhere i don't remember live long it's 76 and and you don't even look it you surely don't act it <laughs> Amen. And Aaron just confirmed it to you. Amen. Happy birthday. Hey, I want to, um, I'm going to turn off my effects if I got some on or something like that going on. And hallelujah. Hey, I've been I've been hearing the Lord talk to me about um, sound for a few few months, and um, I'm probably going to write a book on it. I have a book on called Good Vibrations that I do on WaterMusicology.com that I use for people that are trying to kind of move themselves towards healing that has to do with sound. And um, and so I've just been studying it. Well, the other morning. I woke up and I just heard the word sound, but I also heard content. And so we know that there's um there's a way to communicate and then there's a way not to communicate. And so I'm gonna talk to you about that based on what I've heard hearing the spirit of the Lord say. And I just wanna preference it. It's this isn't this isn't a marital thing. Um, it's not communication between husband and wife. It's not about how we should talk and have a good and right tone with each other even though we, you may be dealing with some of that in your own marriage. This is about something else. So we're going to have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you, God, that you are opening up the eyes and the ears and our heart, Father, to hear what you have to say, that we can grab onto this and uh, hear, hear it the way that you are delivering it. And may I just deliver it, Father, the way that you need me to, to deliver it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to go to a couple of scriptures today, and I want to start with uh, James chapter, I believe it's James chapter 5. I think I have it up here somewhere. James chapter 5, it says in verse 13, are there any believers in your fellowship suffering great hardship and distress? If anybody is that way, then James says that what we should do is encourage, we should be encouraged to pray. He's encouraging us to pray. If there's anything going on in your life, we should be praying for it, right? He says, are, are there happy, cheerful ones among you? Question mark. Encourage them to sing out their praises. Which is then that if you are joyful, if you are whatever that is, happy, the way to express it is through singing. Mm hmm. Through singing. And I'm not, I'm not the one to like musicals, but I really believe that there is, that your life is supposed to be 
and I'm probably only going to say this one time, a musical, that your life is supposed to be where you are consistently releasing joy in song, that you consistently are singing instead of just singing worship, singing a praise song, singing a whatever, you know, but actually singing to one another. The scripture even talks about it, and so we're going to see some of that. If you're happy, if you're cheerful, if, if that's what you are, then you should sing. You should sing out their praises. That's what you should do. Then it says in verse 14, are there any sick among you? Which then begins to say, maybe you're not happy. Maybe you're sick. Then ask the elders of the church to come and pray over the sick and anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. And then it says, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And if they have committed sins, they will be forgiven. I like all that. Then it says, verse 16, confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. If anybody's offended anybody in here, if I've offended anybody in here, online, wherever you are, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because you confess those things, though, the scripture says, so then we can then pray for each other. Don't pray for somebody when you're mad at them. Don't pray for someone when they're mad at you. You need, you, you need to be, we need to get all the confession done first so then healing can happen. It's very, it's very important. It, there's, it's, it's talking to us about order. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. If they've committed sins, they are forgiven. Then he says in verse 16, confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed for, and this is my verse, for tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Let the church say amen. That's so good. It, it says um, in another translation, which I'm going to use. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that the that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. That's not the verse I wanted to read. I wanted to read verse 16. Uh, 15 and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he committed sins they shall be forgi they shall be forgiven him verse 16 confess your faults one to another pray for one another that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much it's effectual it's fervent and then it's a prayer and it has to be from a righteous man that causes us to see prayers that avail much. And I was just looking at that briefly in a few other scriptures, which you're going to see again this morning that we're familiar with, because I think I want to call this this morning um, unanswered prayer. Unanswered prayer. I think that when I read these scriptures right here, it make it it says to me there are prayers that avail much, and there are prayers that don't. We don't like to talk about it in church so much in gatherings because we are people of faith, but we have to ask ourselves. Because I'm asking myself, I'll say I have to ask myself, how come my prayer didn't work today? How come my prayer didn't work just now? I'm asking myself that whenever it's not working so that I can figure out how to get it to work, because it, it does work. It says it works. So if I'm not in order, or if I'm out of order, or if I'm putting one thing in front of the other and I should be doing what the scripture says, if I'm not doing that, then I'm probably not gonna get the results or the rewards that are expected as an outcome from the prayers that are being uh, uh, delivered. If, if I am, then I'm doing something right. And then we don't like to talk about it because we sometimes we can't find what it is that we're doing wrong, that we can't get the prayer answered 
or we don't know if it's a process, if it's time, is what's going on that the thing hasn't happened for us in the time frame that we want to see it happen. I don't mind talking about hard stuff. When you pray for somebody and they don't get it, when you get their healing, when you pray for somebody and you confess and you've done all the things that you think are in order and your kids still go sideways and your your spouse still goes sideways and your your household still is this or that and it's not lining up the way that you thought it would based on the prayers that you released and sometimes we have to ask ourselves what in the world is going on and not just be okay with the fact that it's going on so that's where I am today I believe that there is a sound to prayers that avail much. And there is a sound to prayers that don't avail much. I just want to find out what is the sound that causes prayers to avail much. Or is it a sound? Or is it a sound? I want to go to Corinthians. I think I want to go to 1 Corinthians. What's the love chapter? 1 Corinthians 13. I like this chapter. Okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. I'm looking at the King James Version because you're really familiar with it, and I don't want it to be all poetic right now. I want you to hear it. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, have not love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, love, I am mm, nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, charity, it profits me nothing it says in verse 8 charity never fails charity never fails there is a sound that is acceptable and there is a sound that is clangy brassy irritating We don't want to hear it. No one wants to hear it. It's not just that it's wrong content. It is the the wrong emotion connected to what you're saying. And so he says right here that I could be speaking with the tongues of angels or the tongues of men like You could either be really putting the words together or you could be really putting the spiritual things together. It could all be working in your favor and we're all like highly impressed. But if love isn't connected to it, then it's brassy, it's tinkling, it's loud, it's we can't receive it only because love isn't attached to it, not because of the content. Because your content may be great, but because you aren't delivering the content with love, we just hear a bunch of noise. That works all over the world. We hear a bunch of noise when people aren't delivering what they're saying with the spirit of love or the emotion of love, we'll call it, or the other added part to what has to be in the bucket of our content that we're going to spill over into the world. If we don't have love, then we we don't have the necessary element so that it can be received. So we don't, don't sign up. So we don't sound like a bunch of noise. So you don't sound like a bunch of noise. Too many times we think sometimes that it's it's the way we said it. No, you just didn't add love to it. So since you didn't add any love to it, it just sounds like that's my brassy Mm -hmm. 
that means to me that I can change the whole sound of something that I am saying and how it feels after when I when to you by just adding love to it. All the right words, all the right intention, and now add love to it, it becomes sweet as honey. It doesn't, it's, it's, it's not offensive. No love, it just becomes a lot of noise. Okay, so how does that look today? It looks like the noise that we hear going on in the world around us on social media, on the news, in different areas, it's just a bu- it's a bunch of the frequency is like irritating. It's noisy in this world because it's low on love. Okay. Okay. I'll let you guys look at the people wherever they are. Hang on. I'm gonna read some more. I want to read to you this word I was reading. I heard the father say, I have not called you to walk in the pathway of the unrighteous. To do the things that you see others doing, to speak of the same conversations that you hear others speaking. Like, don't get involved. It's not, I'm not, I haven't called you to that, he says. I have called you into separation. I have not called you into an inclusive lifestyle. But I've called you to be separated. And he said, come out from among them and do no harm. Just just come out. He says, be like I am. See like I am. See like the Father. Do like the Father. I heard him say that you have seen and will see more. Now listen to this. You have seen and you will see more of the upfront, out front gender reveal of a sinful people. Do not query this in your mind. Uh, don't entertain the thoughts and the imaginations of others, the father says. Cast down every imagination that attempts to be lifted above truth. Anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ, the scripture says, has to be brought down. It doesn't matter how close they are, how far it, you bring that, that you bring that thing down. You have no need to entrain your lives to that of the most dominant voices. You could use the word align. You, don't, you, you should not allow yourself to be aligned with or entrained with the most dominant voices. But he's talking about sound because the dominant voices are the loudest voices many of the times. And th- they're the ones that are speaking loudly to get you to move towards their side. They speak loudly to cause you to hear and to move your lives towards them through sonic repetition. Which means you're consistently all the time hearing that until you're so worn down from hearing it that you receive it because of the repetition. He says they plot to bring others into alignment with their thoughts and with their beliefs. Right? Then he says the passing of information through sound, through music, through noise, and even through medicine has degrees of success and failure. So I was studying something, and, um, and he just kind of said it back to me. Um, I've been studying that uh, you can have sound, and you can also have chemistry, chemicals, chemistry. So you can uh, put in chemistry information, and you can put within sound information, okay? So then the information that I put in sound can be uh, 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 easily used in your life. When I put information in chemistry, 
the percentages go way down on how your life uses it. What does all that mean? Medicine. There's information in chemistry, in the chemistry, right? And then that information is supposed to help your body. So they put a couple of things together, three, four, five, six different types of chemicals together to, to have a certain reaction in your body so that your body gets healed well, or helped or whatever is supposed to happen. There's a 1% chance compared to if I use sound and put information in sound and it helping your body. Sound will help your body 100% of the time or harm your body 100% of the time, just like medication. It depends on what's, what the content is and also what you're using to deliver that information. So chemistry, medicine, which is what everyone is using in the world right now, is slow to get you where you're supposed to be in your body. Sound will get you there quicker. You can't make many money off of that, though. So that's why the pharmaceutical companies aren't selling sound pills. So I heard the father say when, I, when he speaks, he makes a sound. And when he makes a sound, it is intentional. It's, with, it's filled with purpose, and it's filled with creative force. It's filled with creative intent. The sound carries the creative intent of the father and causes the springing forth of life. You can look at the book of Genesis if you want to. Genesis chapter 1. And keep on reading the whole chapter. And you will see, of course, that he spoke a thing. And when he spoke a thing, then creative things began to happen from him speaking a, a thing. You cannot read fast enough, the father said, to exceed the speed of sound can't read fast enough to exceed or to exceed the speed of sound. So he says, I am speaks and causes the dead to rise, the blind to see, the mute to sing, the deaf to hear, because I am releases the sound with information contained within the sound. So when you're making a sound, he says, let there be light. He doesn't say, let there be light. I don't know how he says it, but I know it's not let there be light. Because that's that still is going on today. The, the light is still going. The universe has no end because light is still being created. However he said it, he said it in such a way that it changed the scope of a world that was void as Holy Spirit was brooding over the water, bringing life back into the land. And he says, let there be, and he begins to speak. I think it's, I think it's relevant then to say, when he says mm -hmm. to me, and I'm saying to you that we should understand he can heal the sick, raise the dead, make the blind to see, cause people that can't hear to hear. It's the content and it's the sound that we're making that causes to happen what needs to happen. If you're doing deliverance with someone, you don't have to shout, but you do have to speak with authority. When I'm asking my kids to come in to the house, when I had kids to come in the house, because they weren't on the computer, if I'm asking one to get off the computer now, then, um, I'm doing so with the with intent and with purpose, and I'm not saying get off the computer. <laughs> Sounding like Michael Jackson, get off the computer. No, I need to say with a thought, come in the house. No. Why you do that? Be healed in Jesus' name. I I need to be connecting the dots. The dot is, it's not just what I say, it's also how I say it, and it's also the intent around what I'm saying. So, love has to be involved, mm -hmm. and I need to be saying it like I mean it, whatever it is that I'm saying, in order to get the result 
that I'm supposed to get. I'm going to keep on reading the word before I get ahead of myself. But Genesis is an example of creation where he speaks and causes a thing to happen. Also, another example would be in the New Testament where Jesus is ascending from, bap- from his being baptized and being spoken over then happens by his father. And he is launched into his ministry after that. He comes out of the wilderness after temptation. He gets baptized. He gets baptized. The Bible says he, 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 he ascends out of the water and his father's voice speaks over him. And not just where he could hear it, everybody could hear it. Everybody could hear it. The third one is the first thing that happened during that time, which was that the enemy is speaking lies in temptation to Jesus uh, uh, while he's in the wilderness and he's fasting. Um, He's talking about sound that is being released in time frames where one is Jesus in the wilderness sound is being released content is filling that sound the devil has a certain intent with what he is releasing the Jesus comes out of that his father speaks over him up until then the enemy was the only other voice that he heard in the wilderness now the greater voice speaks over him and says who you are and what I am to you. I am pleased, you are my son, I am well pleased. Launches him into ministry for the next three years. Mm -hmm. So sound is filled with information. All sound is filled with some kind of information. So then he, uh, he took me here. When, when, when the father says decree a thing, you know the scripture, when you decree a thing and it will be established, you say to yourself, yeah, I've been saying stuff, but I'm not seeing it established. That's because you're not decreeing it. A decree is a, a terminology used f- as far as law is concerned where you're making a a legal statement in a moment. So when you do that, it's like being in court. You ever been in court or seen it on TV? The judge doesn't just tap the thing with the hammer. He he always smacks it with authority, you know, to get people's attention so that he can state what he needs to state. We've lost that sometimes in somewhat in the church where we don't bring the hammer down on what the enemy is doing so that we can establish what the father has said. So then he's saying things and these things are part become part of our imagination and we're not casting every imagination down. Not just saying, come down. No, I'm not going to think about you. No, cast down that imagination, which speaks of a violent takeover of whatever is trying to infiltrate your thinking, your thought life, your processes, and cause that thing to be above what truth is, what Jesus has said, who Jesus is, what you know scripture has said about it. You have to be demonstrative and intentional. No no weak decrees. I decree in Jesus name that this is whatever I decree. I make a decree in the name of Jesus, whatever that is. Not I decree in Jesus name that this thing is not going to harm me. That's not the that's not the seat to take. That's not the that's not that's not fervent. It's not effective. And it's not going to avail nothing. So you're going to come away with a little disappointment, a little frustration, because your prayer just now and your decree was weak. It was weak. And you say, well, I don't have to be loud. I don't have to be this. I don't have to be that. But what's wrong with being passionate? There's nothing wrong with being passionate. When you don't want to be passionate, it's because somebody shut down passion within you. It was okay, though, when you were one years old, two years old, three years old, four years old, five years old, until somebody said, stop that, stop that, stop that. Don't be doing that. Stop that, stop that. And so then you figured, oh, now let me 
start, you know, you started getting it squashed and now you don't release your emotions. And then you buy into the culture that says that men aren't supposed to be passionate and, and it's okay for women to be passionate. And so we f fulfill roles that a culture has placed on us instead of what the kingdom of God has said. And so then we can't have everything we're supposed to have if we're not passionate about it. You say you want God, you want God, I want God, I want more of you, God. Give me more of you, God. What do I have to do, God? He's asking, for sis, let me see some passion with what you're doing. Like, don't just say you're coming after me and you just sit there like a bump on a log. You're not really interested in me. You go after your, your husband, your wife better than that, your girlfriend, your boyfriend quicker than that you go after what you want quicker than that but then when you say to give god give me more of you give me more of you and it's like you know i don't see no passion in that i don't see no you don't i don't feel nothing i don't feel no love i don't feel like you really gotta have me you gotta have me and i'm the only thing you got that's not that's not passion you gotta you need some passion ain't nothing wrong with passion your husband wants passion. Your wife wants passion. Your children wants you to be passionate. I used to hug my kids, my kids, my own kids. I remember, I remember, and my, my daughter pointed it out to me because I was hugging her like I was in church, giving her shoulder hugs. I was like, what the, what the, what the, what the, what the? Didn't even realize it, you know. You know, because I, you know, I was like a dad. I was like, I didn't. I don't want I don't want all that frontal stuff on me. And so <laughs> I mean when they were older. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, so she pointed it out to me and so I changed that. I changed I completely changed that that up because because they thought about it, and so I thought about it, and so I need to fix that. Because it's interesting when you say you are pursuing God or person or job or thing, whatever that is, there should be some, some kind of passion behind what your pursuit is. Your passion actually shows what level your pursuit is. When there's no passion, get some deliverance so that your passion can be alive again. Ain't nothing wrong with that, right? When you d when he says decree a thing and it would be established, he speaks of sound. Your decree is the sound of authority. Authority in you, authority being released. I am giving you a qualifier, a prerequisite that must happen first. It is an order. You can't just say a thing. You have to decree a thing. You can't whisper it. You have to decree it for it to be established. For you to see what you don't see, you have to do more than just say a little something. Well, I said it, Jesus. I said it. Lord, how come my prayers aren't being answered? What do I need to do? How about be a little more fervent, a little more, and, and you know, different translations, as you'll look at, I'm sure, uh, say different things about fervent and effectual. And sometimes they say things that are uh, showing that your prayers will become effective when you've done the confessing and all of the things you need to do first so that you can have effective prayer that makes your prayer effective that is absolutely true but it also talks about when it talks about fervency it's talking about mighty a mighty release a mighty release not not an unmighty release okay we'll just say it that way prayer that avail much prayers that avail much must be in order prayers that avail much start it with sound that is being made it starts with fervency it starts with a, a, a mighty release. Oh God. Oh Jesus. There's like a time for that. And then there's a time when you need to be. Mm. Why? Um, Newton says, you know, you have to 
in, he says it in this roundabout way. He says it better than I do. But you have to equal. You have to uh, deal with the force that is coming against you with equal or greater force. Okay, so that's that's just physics. But it means then in the spirit, the stuff that's coming against you, you have to come against it with equal or greater force. Knowing who you are and standing on that authority and coming against whatever it is coming against you. Even if it's coming against your yourself, the stuff going on in your head, in your heart, in your belly, in your life. You have to take authority over that and stop your hands from stealing. Stop your feet from going to the place. Stop your mouth from cussing. Stop your eyes from lusting. Stop your mind from wondering. You have authority over yourself. It should begin with yourself, but you're going to have to at least make some type of passionate determination to take authority over whatever's going on in you so then you can also begin to do that on the outside there is a sound to authority there is a sound to weakness there is a sound to not knowing that you have authority there is a sound to intimidation you know when people are intimida intimidated because they don't talk like they're confident they they talk like they're not sure uh, um, they don't know what to say. They don't know how to say it because they're all intimidated. They all, uh, we don't have to be that way. We don't have to be that way. Don't cast away your confidence. I'm going to keep going with this word. The two prerequisites uh, for that particular passage of scripture in James is fervency and righteousness, right? Righteousness. So you can be holy, you can be righteous, you can be on the Lord's side. And your prayers are not effective. That's just the truth. Because you're not, you're not praying strong enough. And I'm not asking you to pray. I'm not asking you to pray like somebody else prays strong. He's asking you to pray in your authority. Have a mighty release. Don't pray like you don't know you have authority because then it's not a mighty release. It's a mighty release of the spirit. If that means you have to raise your voice a little bit to release your authority, then do so. But the, but the point is, is that you are having a mighty release so that you can have availing prayers. Yeah. Knowing and loving God just is not enough to overcome situations, thoughts, and sin in the world just because you know God it is not enough just because you know him doesn't make everything else great you got to walk this thing out the right way you have to do certain things in order if you want to see your prayers uh, if we want to see our prayers move things then consistency obviously is great but we have to do it with certain passion and release and love Amen. Mm -hmm. I know it's good. So I like when God speaks, you know, these aligning words because we can have prayers that aren't penetrating. We have prayers that aren't busting through whatever it is that it needs to get to the other side so we can see the opening. He told me your praise, your song must have a sound attached to that information. For instance, in Psalms 100, he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's a sound that is by prerequisite joyful. It is a noise that is joyful. Like it's okay to be happy. It's okay to have joy. You can't give God praise if you're making a noise, but it is full of sorrow. He's talking about an emotion attached to your sound will determine if that is qualified or unqualified. What's going on in your head? What's going on in your heart? W those things, when you release it in that noise, determines whether it's the standard or not. 
You can't have hate, anger, any other stuff you can think of, wrong stuff, bad stuff, stirring in yourself and say, I love you. I praise you. I worship you when all that stuff, because what you're releasing is the wrong emotions. You're saying the right words, but the, there's wrong emotions in there. So now it becomes not a noise that he's requiring that's joyful. Now it becomes a clanging cymbal. Heaven doesn't want to hear clanging cymbals. Heaven doesn't want to hear your tinkling cymbal. Ting, ting, ting. I love you. I love you. Ting, 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 ting. He doesn't want to hear all that. He wants to hear a heart that is intentional and that is full of love for him, that is passionate for him. But likewise, we don't want to hear that. Whether you're married, whether you're a friend, whether whoever you're in relationship with, we want to hear words that have something behind them called love because that helps then for us to catch it and get it and, and move forward in it. I'm going to keep on going. I'm almost done. Make a joyful noise. It's a sound that's a prerequisite, not any noise. The Father is not asking for uh, obedience without proper demonstration of order. The Father requires the order of the demonstration so that you obtain the expected result. You can read the whole that whole chapter. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God. He is he that has made us. Not read ourselves. We are his people and she with us. Pastor, you read, read all of it yourself. Other examples would be when we read in scripture things like cry out loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. That wasn't just for David's time. That's for, for you to cry out loud, to have a sound of release, a mighty release, so that you get the expected outcome. When he says, be still, when he says, be silent, when he says, salah, that has a sound. That means, shh, shh, be still, be, be silent. You don't have to say nothing. That's the loudest sound is silence. And that's the hardest thing sometimes for us to do is just, just to be quiet in the presence of the Lord. Just to be quiet. The power is in the content and the sound, not just the one, but it's in both. It's in both. It's in both. So the scriptures that I started with in, I lost my place here, sorry. In First <coughs> Corinthians chapter 13, I want to end with, because if I speak with the tongues of angels and tongues of men, and I don't have love, I'm making noise. Everything we speak is in the direction of others for their purposes. They must have love attached to the sound or else the sound changes and becomes unacceptable, which is it's harder to receive noise to draw someone to gather people towards you. Love causes the sound to be acceptable to the hearing but without love, the emotion or the filter, the intention for communicating to people, it is not acceptable. It's unacceptable. It's an unacceptable sound for reception, but because it, it sounds brassy. It sounds, it sounds ugly. Your heart's motivation determines if what you are saying and speaking in that moment of making a sound is acceptable or just noise and offensive which is what is in your heart. It's not what goes in, the scripture says, it's what comes out that defiles you, which is speaking of the sound that you are making. If you are making a sound and that sound is filled with craziness, then we, and craziness is sinful stuff. Craziness is ugliness. Craziness is mean stuff. Craziness is anger. Craziness is you all emotional inside of uh, in the wrong way, and you're releasing all of that, then, then you're not going to be heard. You're not going to be received because you've not done the necessary things. You are attaching that information to that sound 
and it sounds brassy. Right? The level of influence is determined by the content and the emotion contained within the sound. Got kids. We got parents on here. If you were talking to your kids and you are angry inside and trying to get them to do something, you are not going to have the same influence on them that you think you're going to have. You, 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 because anger is defiling you. So now you sound brassy. You sound like tinka, 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 tinka. You don't sound like the person of authority. I, in my, um, this is just for us, because it is for us. But I remember in my first marriage, uh, I, I would say things softly to my kids, like with, with authority, you know. So they're, whatever ages, all their ages, I did it the same way. And then the only time I really got out of hand was when I was emotional about it and I was angry inside and then I found myself yelling. Stop that, I just, you know, whatever it is, something, 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 you know. But usually it was, and this was probably, this was more, more than, more than not, I would be like, you better stop that right now, you know. I, I know I told you, do it again. I, don't make me come back there, you know, be driving on the road. Don't make me come, because I'm the guy that would stop on in the car and beat your tail on the side of the road and then get back in the car and we're going to go. I believe in whoopings. So so I did that. And um, <laughs> but my but my other my 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 ex at the time now is she was she, she didn't know her authority, let's say. So she would always yell. So then by the time you've yelled so much, the kids don't care. They're like, you you ain't doing nothing yelling. You know, like that doesn't mean nothing because that's what we hear all the time. You know, so by the time I start raising my voice, me, if I start raising my voice, it's like, whoa, uh, dad is more serious than usual right now. So um you know s stop or we both get in trouble i'm just using that as an example to say just because you're feeling a certain way inside whatever it is that you're releasing in your house to your family to your friends and other relationships it how you release it and what's attached to it will determine how it influences the people that you are communicating with I've been in some worship services, even recently, like last week. And I just want to, I just want to be like, <laughs> like one part of, my, one part of me is like, oh God, oh my gosh, I want to go sit down. The other part of me is like, what are y'all doing? Like, don't y'all know how good God is? How come y'all ain't getting, but you know. Neither one of those works, so I just kind of stick to the uh, stick to the flow of wh where we're at. Just keep tr plowing the ground, and you know what? Plowing the ground in relationships can be like. You know, I haven't seen anything come up. I just got to keep plowing because I know it. One day, we're gonna have a harvest in a few. We're going to have some worshiping people in a few. We're going to have some happy, joyful to something going on. But plowing is just that. It is tedious, and you could get caught up in yourself in all the plowing and be disgruntled. Plowing is what we do when we raise kids. I'm plowing. I'm planting seeds in their life. That's plowing. Sometimes it don't feel good because their response is not like, thank you, father. Thank you, mother, for plowing in my life. 
and planting those seeds in my heart. Doesn't happen. I, it, it, I hope it, it, it just, some, it sometimes they, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. And so you get angry, like all oh, the stuff I do for you and you ain't, and this how you gonna act? Your influence is decreasing or let's say diminishing by your show of what is in your heart. What you are, let me say it another way since nobody wants to say amen. You release something out of your mouth, it makes you look ugly. Your influence diminishes because all we see, all they see, all we're experiencing is, is your ugliness. And then therefore, you're not getting the result that you intended to get. You know, you're not going to, and we, I'm just using anger because because I used to have a really bad temper. So anger, um, it just doesn't get the result. Being angry won't get you the end that you thought. And by the time you finish spilling all of your anger guts on everybody, everybody's just like, oh gosh, you just that was just so nasty what dad just did to us that, you know, pulling, that's pulling. Angry guts. Hallelujah. This is church. I think God requires love in every situation in our conversations. And he requires that we sing sometimes and other times we're talking. He requires that we uh, deliver a sound that is attached to our intent, that is attached to our authority and not just um, be unintentional. Where we say the right thing, but we don't say it the right way. So then we don't get the right result. And then we're frustrated or disappointed or something, something, something else. And we think, well, let me hang on that emotion and push that one. But the scripture says in first Corinthians chapter 13 that I can change how people receive me only by what I include in the content, which is love. Love is huge. Love is a big deal. Love is makes the world go round. Love is the 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 dominant uh, emotion, if you want to, if we want to call it that. It's dwindling it down. I know a lot, but that is the and should be the dominant emotion in our life and what pushes us and what drives us and what is our cause because we love. If that's not true, then there are times that where our influence is, is going down and our reception is going down and our noise is going up. And we think that we're effective because we're saying it. But just because you said it, just because you did it, means absolutely nothing according to first corinthians chapter 13 because you can be doing all of those wonderful things have faith that's huge and have not that love like it needs to be at the level it needs to be and just that alone will cause all of that other stuff to be wiped out to be completely nothing love has a tone love has a tone it, it, there's a sound to love. There's a sound to it. Availing prayers has a tone. Prayers that avail much, they have a tone. Uh, joy has a tone. Just as much as sorrow has a tone. And sadness has a tone. And depression has a tone. A sound. You know when people are sad, sorrowful, depressed. And you also know when people are happy and joyful. Crying has a tone. I said it before, Salah has a tone. So the father said, uh, what tone are you using with the enemy? What tone are you using with your family? 
what tone are you using with others? Your tone, your sound must be aligned or entrained with his sound to get the results that are stated in scripture. We can't have yelling in anger, hateful words, lazy praying, sad, lazy praise, because that's why he says, I will bless the Lord at all times, those times when you don't feel like it and the times that you do, that that praise is still joyful and not, well, today I don't feel like it, so it's okay. It's not. It's really not. It's not acceptable. It's unacceptable. And therefore, then you get the results of unacceptable praise because you're not being joyful. So when everybody's saying what everybody says, like uh, when the praises go up, the blessings come down, that's for everybody else. But if my praise ain't joyful, when the praises go up, whatever, it ain't nothing coming down because no praises are going up. Results, this is my last part, results come from order. Results come from order. Um, they are birthed from order. And my last thought is that these results are released in the combustion that begins with putting things together that by themselves aren't as effective, but when they're combined with the right sound, everything changes. Some things don't work by themselves, but you start putting things together, like authority with your prayers, with confession. You begin to see results, authority, and confession and praying, you start to see results. He used, he's, he used them, that's what James was talking about. S speaking well, speaking in tongues of men, speaking in tongues of angels, uh, doing all kinds of things and knowing all kinds of mysteries and prophetic and all that other kind of great, wonderful, spiritual stuff, moving mountains, shaking nations, and add love to that, and that is powerful. Doing it, and no love is added to it and it's just a you just making a, some more noise you're just adding to the noise that is in the world you're adding to the noise that's already in your family when you are uh the noise maker i've been the noise maker i know what noise making sounds like i know what losing my temper sounds like and hitting a wall putting a hole in the wall, have to fix that wall. I never did it again after that. I'm tired of fixing wall. I don't want to fix a wall. I'm not going to kick a wall again because I got to fix it later. The longer you leave it like that, the easier it is to see, to, to let stuff go. Oh, I had to fix the wall. So no more kicking walls, no more hitting walls out of anger. I'm so angry, I'm going, bam, and then hit that wall and think you're doing something because you want to scare somebody into, uh, yeah, submission. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah, because you're just being stupid, you know. But if if we're if we're smart, if we're smart, we'll use the right emotions with the right content and the right sound, and we get the expected outcome. If if we're smart. If we want to see our prayers take off and begin to overcome what the enemy is doing in our lives and in people that we pray for, then we have to do it with in, in the order that he's saying. Sometimes you, you before you start praying, you need to say, is there anything you need to confess? Anything you need to confess? That way you could be forgiven and then your prayers will have some power. Because you can just say, somebody can say, I want some prayer, and 
you just start praying. Okay, yes, let's pray for you. And you do in all the tongues of men, tongues of angels. But nobody's confessed. So something is awry. And we're not going to get the results we need to get. And then you can't blame God for that. And we can't shove it off religiously and say, well, you know, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Just you keep holding on. God ain't like that. God's like, I'm just waiting on the proper offering that you want to bring. When you do it, then you get the right result. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, that the right results will come out of our lives. So we cast down every imagination, every emotion, Father, that is not a fruit of the spirit, that is not born of the spirit. Those things in the world that we have aligned ourselves with, that we have entrained ourselves with, Father, that we've allowed to dominate our lives, Father, living under the emotions of sin and the emotions uh, uh, brought on by a sinful world. Father, we resist and we renounce living and allowing ourselves to live that way and connecting ourselves with the falsities of the world, Father, and then coming to you and wanting to have what we need. Father, we ask forgiveness for walking contrary to truth, for walking contrary to the gifts and the fruits that you've already passed out and given to us. Forgive us, Father, for walking in sin and realign our hearts, Father, to the sound of heaven, to the sound of your voice so that we would know and that we would seek and that we would be passionately moving ourselves towards you, Father, that we might see the results that we have not seen because of one little thing, some little fox has spoiled the vine. We speak to every fox right now, every demonic fox, every emotional fox, every natural thing that's going on, the foxes of hindrances. We bring those down in Jesus' name. Every fox in our thinking and our thought life, let those things be crushed under the blood of Jesus. Father, renew our hearts, renew our minds through your truth, through your word so that we can accomplish, Father, your kingdom purposes in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. I'm hitting the keyboard all day. Amen. Hey, you guys can stop the recording. I want to do a quick discussion. And um, 